Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. I had, I don't know how many people asked me this week how I turned these photos from this to, wait a minute, what happened? There we go, there it is, to that. Wow, it really punches. And this one, which I thought was completely gone, I thought there was no way that I was going to be able to save this into anything salvageable or anything at all. And I turned it into this awesome black and white, which I absolutely love. But let's tell you how I did it. And uh, by the way, these photos were from the vacation video that I did last week uh, from the photos when I was uh, out in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, this is from Red Rock Canyon. So I started out pretty plain photo. Uh, not a lot of contrast as you can see our histogram all the data is pretty much in the middle. We have no blacks We have no uh, lights um, It's just a normally exposed image uh, But we need to do something with it. We need to pump it up and make it look good So first thing that I will do on something on on this type of image Where I know that the histogram is right here in the middle All right, it start off with contrast and as you see, as I'm moving my contrast, watch my histogram here, okay? The histogram is expanding, and so did the color range, okay? Let me go back and show you that again, before and after, all right? So that color is already starting to pop. Now, next thing I want to do, a little bit more mid-tone contrast in the clarity. That's going to spread it out a little bit more, okay? That's a good thing, but the big tool and the big swing that we're gonna make is here in the tone curve alright nice thing about the tone curve is is that we can put data wherever we want alright there is our contrast right there now this looks a little bit too light for me and so I wanna darken it just a little bit but I still want my highlights in the clouds so that's a good thing alright now my blacks I think I'm Take a glance over here at my histogram, and they're looking pretty good. Maybe I'm going to back off on my darks a little bit, but that's pretty darn close. All right, next thing I want to come back and play with is my white balance. All right, I like a little bit warmer photo, as uh, you may or may not already know, um, but I'm definitely going to back off of that 5500 daylight to somewhere in there. I think that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, um, this is the one that we were just editing, and this is the one that I had edited previously. So, either one of those, just turn my scanner off, either one of those can be uh, good, and, you know, they're both completely acceptable. Now, if you wanted more sky, what you can do, or what I do often, actually, is come down here to this HSL color and uh, black and white so I want HSL and then I choose luminance and I choose a little whoops the little picker here little color picker alright and I grab a blue tone and I drag down and that's gonna darken my sky obviously this is way too much but we back off of it we get it to about the right spot yeah, somewhere in there, you know, you don't want it to be too much, but you don't want it to be too little either. So, you know, obviously when you're up in here, that's not enough, but you come down in here, you know, it's looking pretty good. One other trick for you with skies. I like a really, really blue sky, but sometimes it's a little magenta, sometimes it's a little off or a little yellow or a little this, a little that. So you come over here to your hue, all right? And again, you take the same thing, you take your little color picker here, or whatever they call it and you can adjust the hue of your sky just by dragging up and down now obviously I don't want a green sky because everybody knows that skies aren't green it's gonna be a very minute adjustment alright so I'll get it about where I think it should be that's a little bit too magenta yeah so we're, we're probably somewhere in there and see that matches well that's a nice clean blue contrasting the warmer tones down here and that's what we want so that's the first one next photo is this one obviously I screwed up and overexposed this and not realizing I'm looking at it like the composition is really really good 
uh, especially once I crop it a little bit thinner. Uh, obviously, I left it down here, you know, some stuff on the bottom that I want to get rid of, so that's gone. And I could edit that, I guess, if I wanted, but for this purpose, I'm just going to leave it. And um, in the final, you saw that I cropped down a lot of the sky because I didn't think I need it, but I'm going to leave it for right now. So, first thing I'm going to do on this one is actually start with my recovery slider. Recovery is going to push the highlights back over into the frame so that I'm not clipping any of the lights, any of the whites or anything. Okay? Now, the next one is exposure. Let's bring that down. Alright? And it's getting there. Alright? We go back to our contrast again. And it's still flat. It's not punching like we want it to. You know? This image really punches. You know? This one doesn't. You know, we have the clouds in the background and this and that. And, you know, just just the overexposure and it just didn't isn't working. So what I almost always do is go to black and white to see if I can salvage it. Black and white is a lot more forgiving. And so I'm going to start off making sure my contrast is all the way up. All right. And let's once again go to the tone curve. All right. And let's start pushing some data around. All right, so first start off with some darks. And see, that's already getting there. All right, that's already getting there. It's looking really, really good. Don't want to make the blacks too dark. Um, highlights will start to bring down. And see that? Look at those clouds. Look at those awesome clouds. All right, looking really, really good. Push them down a little bit more. That's getting a little bit too much. So... What I had ended up doing was, see, when I come down, when I'm down here, look at this down here. Look how muddy this is. And it's kind of nasty and weird. All right. So let's come back. So what I ended up doing was come down here to my black and white mix. And I grabbed this little spot right here, which was the blue. And I drug that down. All right. And that saturated and it brought the sky back in for me. Uh, as a separate adjustment rather than an overall adjustment. It was just hitting that area, which is what I wanted. And so that helped. Now, the next thing I did, at least in the original, was I added a bunch. I actually brushed this with a brush. And again, I'm going to do this down and dirty. All right. And so I actually brushed this. Let me turn on, where's my mask? Where is it, where is it, where is it, where did I hit? Okay, so I actually brushed this. I think I turned off my bottom thing here. Bot the bottom menu, so, all right, so I've got this all brushed. Let's see how I did. There we go, that's good enough for right now. Okay, now, I can control the exposure of that area separately all right i can pump up the contrast in there or i can darken it or i can lighten it so that gave me the control to be able to separate the sky area from this uh, from the ground area and to get two different images all right so you know what let's go over here to this actual final one that i had edited in the past and um go step by step off of my uh my history all right so, let's see. Had a little black there, adjusting the exposure. See that? See that? Just not quite there, you know? Playing with my lights. Still, oops, where did I go to color? Oh, okay. Here, I adjusted the, the blue probably in the sky. You can see it's a little punchier from there, okay? But it just wasn't quite right. So, I had to go over to black and white. And that's when I started punching, okay? And in that in that color or the black and white we can really push around that data and make it look really really good all right so here I w this is actually my original set of edits of my original image so I was going back and forth black and white color black and white color what do I like and obviously I stuck with the black and white and uh, then a little bit of a temperature adjustment sometimes I'll take that temperature and just slide it one way or another in a black and white image 
which gives me that kind of tweak that sometimes you just can't get without adjusting it. And it just changes the tones and pushes it one way or the other. It gives you a really cool image. All right, and again, playing with the black and white and the color. Look how far that white balance is off. All right, that is really magenta. But you know what? It doesn't matter because we're going for a black and white image. All right, then we're on our brush strokes. Okay, we're adding brush strokes, we're darkening, and then we're adjusting. And up there, we lightened it. Okay, exported a file. And this is when I started not liking the, the highlights, some of the highlights up in here. And I might still go back in Photoshop and touch them up. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. And uh, still playing with that. And then cropped it from the top. All right. So that's the final image. Hopefully you're able to follow along with that. Um, it's just one of those images that you kind of get lucky with. Where it's a combination of just a review. First, our recovery, all right, that I played with a little bit. Exposure you can play with. Split, to or not split toning, sorry. The black and white mix. And um, then up here in the adjustment brush. All of those made a big difference in these couple of images and we'll show you this one again and that one cool images didn't really need to adjust that sky but I showed you how to do it anyway for your photos Greg Cazillo Cazillo.com